here with Temple University football tight end KJ Martin. Yes, sir. We'll talk about that in just a second. But at this point of the offseason, the, the last time that we talked to you was in July in Vegas at Summer League. Since then, what has life been like for you? I know that includes the, the Rico Hines runs with yeah. the Sixers team as well. Yeah, no, it's been cool. I mean, I've seen y'all at Summer League. I came out here, I did physicals and stuff like that. Obviously just signed and then I went back home to LA. So well, a bunch of the guys were out there. So it was just easy for me to go and work out with the team. Like I was home. So I was just working out and chilling, being with my family and stuff like that. And then now I'm back here getting started for the season. Yeah, the day that we spoke to you at Summer League was literally the day that the news came out about yeah, your contract. Yeah. And you said your dad was saying you're going to be paying for dinners yeah, for sure. going yeah, forward. For sure. Yeah, no, he, he was like, oh, you got some money now. So every time, all the times I pay for dinner for you, it's time for you to pay now. So I'm still going to make him pay, though. Don't worry. 15 years in the NBA, Kenyon Martin, yeah. senior. But when it comes to, before we talk Temple football and what these practices yeah. and runs have been like here at the Penn Medicine Philadelphia 76ers training complex, Coach Rico Hines, mm -hmm. because you are you were out on L.A. and dating back to your teenage years, mm -hmm. your relationship with yeah, him, what sure. was year one together like with, with an NBA organization? Um, year one, t um, it was the same between me and Rico. Like, it was just he know me since – I was like 14, maybe 15. So like I was always working out with him since then every summer. So when I came in, we already had a relationship. So it was just like, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. the same thing. It's, and that's how he is with everybody. Like, oh, he, yes, like he helps us. He's our coach, but he doesn't make it seem like that. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, he like an uncle to us. Like, oh, he's going to help us in this, whatever we need. He got us and he's going to let us know the truth. And whether you like to hear it or not, it's just he knows it's for the better of us as uh, people and basketball players. So just having him around helps a lot. How high stakes are the free throws that you – the free throw you have to make oh, yeah. at the end of the game? For sure. Yeah, no, that, that's the biggest thing. He was – he's like, no one's guarding you. You always have to make it, so. He has said that at the end of those Rico runs, he's seen 80 90% NBA free throw shooters yeah. to win the game – is it to seven? Yeah. You have to tack on the free yeah, throw. So thanks. Yeah, it's no, cool to hear yeah, for sure. those no. types of stories. Yeah. But then on the court down below us, when the team is getting ready for the season, whether it's September and leading into early mm -hmm. October, obviously training camp after yeah. media day and all that, there's a sort of football theme that we talked to yeah. head coach Nick Nurse about. There's like football tackling dummies yeah. and yardage markers yeah. and then the helmet. So for anyone out there who hasn't seen the photos on the Sixers social media, you were in the Temple University yeah. football helmet. Yeah. What did you have to do to earn that? Uh, I forgot. It was like, oh, it was like we had to, because they have the court mark, the court is marked, and you have to, we have to get like a certain amount of throw aheads. So it was like you throw ahead like a football player or whatever. So I had the helmet on, and I think Tyrese got the glove. So I took the helmet, I put the helmet on, and they posted it. And Temple's like, oh, we need our helmet back. We got a game. I'm like, oh, I could start at tight end. So, I mean, I always think, like, if I ever play basketball, I think I'll be a damn good football player at tight end. I always have to put a little bit of weight on. But besides that, I think I could be pretty good. Did you ever play football? Yeah, for like one, two years. I just didn't like practicing outside like that. What, what position at that time? Receiver tight end. Okay. Yeah, so no, I, I think my hands are good enough, but obviously I'm athletic enough and I'm tall enough. So the one thing is just gaining that weight and getting used to getting hit like that. But besides that, I'll be good. You mentioned Tyrese Maxey. Thinking back to AAU days mm -hmm. in Texas, Yeah. what have you seen from him and his development just as a basketball player? Yeah. But and as a person yeah. too. I mean, yeah, like me and Tyrese, we were in the same grade. So we always like played against each other on the EYBL circuit, like literally year after year after year. So, I mean, we knew each other. Um, he's from Dallas, my dad's from Dallas. And I, most of my dad's side of the family still live there. So we kind of have that connection. But no, nah, you could just see just like year by year, both of us just getting better, getting better constantly, just getting better. Obviously he went to college, I did it. I went my own route and then, then we met obviously at the NBA. We're in the same draft class, so no, it's just cool to see um, and just be around that. Like, oh, we played against each other since we were 16 years old, and then now we're at the highest level. So it's dope. You got your contract 
How did it feel to see him yeah, get his contract? Great, great. I mean, he he works his tail off, so this is always great to see. You know, guys, especially my like, we get the same age, same draft class, and stuff like that. We know each other for a while, so I'm super happy for him. A lot of new players mm. on the team, including some that you've crossed paths yeah, with in sure. your NBA career, which we're going to quiz you towards the end on the early, yeah. very earliest stages yeah. of your NBA playing career, yeah. which isn't that many years ago, yeah. so you have an advantage yeah. over some of the vets, but some of those vets are guys you've played with. So I know it was a brief overlap in mm. L.A. With, yeah. with Paul George, yeah. but then also in Houston with Eric Gordon. Yeah. So if you would, talk about each of those guys, what stands out about Paul George yeah. and Eric Gordon. No, PG, I mean, obviously he's one of the best to do it. 6'9", he can great defensively, great hands and offensively, I mean, He's amazing. You really can't do anything to stop him. So just my time in L.A., just being in uh, training camp and practicing with the, like him every day and just having, you know, to compete against a guy like that and guard him every day, um, that helped me a lot. Um, and then now that he signed here, I mean, we already have that relationship, so it's dope to have, you know, him back on my team. And then me and EG, we were in Houston for a while. So, um, well, I think it was like three years, I believe. So like my first three years, he was like basically one of my vets. So he was always helping me, you know what I'm saying? Whatever I needed, um, I always knew I could pick up the phone and call him. Um, after we went our own separate ways for the year, I still like kept in contact with him and stuff like that. So just having him back on the team is dope also. Just having somebody with that experience and um, we have that relationship off the court, um, it's gonna help us a lot. How was it having PG also at UCLA yeah. for the pickup game? Yeah, no, it was cool. It was dope. It's dope to get out there and him just, you know, get a feel for everybody and the guys he hasn't played with, kind of understand like where they're going to be at and stuff like that. So it was and good. And like, I know some college guys, like there are younger players yeah. there that are sharing the court with, exactly. with Paul George that are less used to it yeah. than someone like yeah. yourself. You shared a locker space next near Ricky yeah, Council, yeah. the fourth. And I wanted to ask you about your dunk contest experience, but there's starting to be some rumors about maybe yeah. Ricky Council, the fourth, yeah. getting onto that yeah. stage someday. Yeah. If, if Ricky Council, the fourth, was to do it, would yeah. you want to go against him? Would you ever want to get get another crack at the NBA slam dunk contest? Uh, I don't think I'll go against him. I think I would just let him go. And if it was just him and other players, I'll for sure just want him to try and go win. But at another time, I'll do it for sure. But I mean, I think he should do it. I mean, he'll have a great shot to win. And just to go out and just have fun and experience just the all-star weekend in general, um, it's really fun, so. And you guys are both good in-game yeah, dunkers sure. too. It's not just like for sure. so, he's doing some of this stuff yeah, in regular season exactly. NBA games. Reflecting further back, January 2021 was your NBA debut. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about your first regular season NBA game? Uh, I wasn't nervous until I actually got on the court. Like at first I'm just like, oh, it's chill. And then once I get up, once I got on the court, I was like, damn. <laughs> Which it, is, I mean, you grew up going. Yeah, to NBA like games. it was just so different because it was just like, Everything up to like going on the court felt pretty normal because I always just watched my dad do it. So it wasn't anything that was like a surprise to me. But like then once I actually got on the court, then I actually was like, okay, this is different. Cause that was like really my first time in like an NBA court and NBA game. So that was probably the only thing. But everything up to that point though, it was like normal. Like I've, since I was a kid up to that point, I literally seen it damn near every day, so. It was for the Rockets. Do you? Yeah. What other details do you recall? Like uh, I think my first point was an alley oop. Actually, it was. It was alley oop dunk. I forgot who passed it to me, but I remember it was alley oop dunk. And I think we were playing. Who we played? Was it the Magic? Maybe it was the Magic. Yeah, it was the Magic. It was so a big win. Yeah. So yeah, my first points was a dunk. So that was that was that was dope. You had seven points. Yeah. Didn't miss a shot. Made yeah. a three. Three for three overall. The final score was 132-90 oh, yeah. over the Magic. Yeah. Can you name the starting lineup? Of that team? Houston uh, Rockets starting lineup, January 8th, 2021. John Wall. Yep. Christian Wood. Yep. Uh, Jay Sean Tate. Not that know, game. Not that game. Christian Wood. DeMarcus, did he DeMarcus start? No. Uh, I don't think James played that game. He might have. James did. <laughs> James. 
So John James, Christian Wood, Sterling Brown, no. Who oh, start? PJ Tucker. Yep. And uh, well, you just named like the whole roster, and I was like, yes or no. So yeah, this is a, yeah, I'm trying to think. Bending who, the rules a little bit. Who but. else was so John James, PJ, C Wood, LA native, well, high school and college ball in LA. David Nawaba. David Nawaba. Dave. Okay. Want to take a crack at any of the Magic starters? Oh my gosh. 2021. I can't even tell you who was starting on them. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Was Vucevic on there yep. still? Vucevic. DJ Augustine wasn't on that team because he was with us. Vucevic. Terrence Ross. No. no. I don't even know. I just know Vooch was on the team. You did well. You did well with your own team. Yeah. Vucevic, uh, Cole Anthony, Dwayne Bacon. James Ennis the third and Gary Clark. Oh my god. So gosh. not their typical yes, that's starting a lineup. Yeah, Cole, I think Cole Anthony is the only one that's still there. Nice yeah. job though. Yeah. KJ Martin, thank you so much. Appreciate you.